God, now bless us this morning. Speak to us through your word. May you encourage us. Uh, may you help us to endure and let it all be to the glory of your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you turn in your Bibles uh, back to the Psalms, we are in Psalm 123 this morning. Psalm 123. All right, Psalm 123, it says it is a, another song of ascents. I'm starting to read in verse 1. It says, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who were, are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of their mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. And this is the word of God, and may he use it to encourage his people. You know, when I was in seminary, I worked as a part-time manager at McDonald's. And one day my boss came up to me and said, hey, we just hired a new guy, and he's a fellow seminary student of yours. So, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I went over to introduce myself to him, and I said, hey, uh, I'm Doug. I, I, I hear you're a, a student at the seminary. And he said, yeah, that's right. And then I got real snarky with him. I said, are you telling me that you actually believe all this God stuff? That you actually believe the Bible is the word of God? And as I said it, I saw his face go from this pale white to this beet red hue. And he began to stumble over his words about how he's going to respond to me. Of course, then I kind of smacked him off the side of his shoulder. I said, ah, I'm just kidding with you. I'm a fellow student of yours at the seminary. Now, um, I thought I was being funny. Um, he probably thought I was a jerk. And he, he was probably more right than I was. <laughs> because, you know, when people say things like that, usually it's not in order to be funny. Uh, usually they are deadly serious and their criticisms are intended to hurt. Um, have you ever had anybody poke fun of you because of your faith? Have you any, anybody become very ugly with you because you would dare believe in the Lord? Well, I have. Um, I've already told you the story of another one of my co-workers there at McDonald's who would ride me virtually every day that I worked with him, mocking me because I was a Christian, taunting me um, with his um, blasphemies against the Lord. I mean, it was, it was a daily occurrence for me with this young man. And if you remember the story that I'm talking about, you know that it had a happy ending that he ended up becoming a child of God himself. So that was wonderful. But that's not always the way it works out. Sometimes the um, accusations and the, um, the taunts, they just, they don't stop. And now in the age of social media, it only amplifies it, right? I mean, you get words from people you've never met and have never heard of. I mean, I have that happen. I'll be talking to somebody that I know, and then suddenly this comment comes in, and it's um, ugly, if not blasphemous, and I don't know who this person is. And then if I, sorry, if I, for whatever reason, maybe make a mistake of clicking on their profile. Look, who, who in the world is this? Find out they live. Um, well, the last one I got was somebody up in Canada somewhere. Um, but it makes you kind of maybe think, man, I don't feel like posting anything online about my faith at all. And, and talk about it at work. I mean, forget about it. Um, well, I hope you won't forget about it. But I would understand um, if you were tempted to bite your tongue. And I, and I believe the psalmist. And they're singing this song would understand as well. Because as we, we return here to these psalms of ascent, these psalms that were sung by crowds of people as they marched up Mount Zion to the temple that sat upon the hill in Jerusalem, they were singing, much like in Psalm 120 and Psalm 121, about the challenge of living in a fallen world while seeking to be faithful to God. 
And in this particular instance, they're talking about the verbal abuse that they would receive from those around them. They were receiving scorn, it says there in verse 4. From those who were at ease, they were receiving contempt from those who were proud. Now, for us, when we hear about this, it should come as no surprise to us that we would indeed face um, such uh, things. Because Jesus, in fact, warned us very directly that this would be the price that his followers would pay and would have to be willing to pay if we're desirous to follow him. But it shouldn't have been a surprise to these psalm singers either. Uh, this was not a new experience to those in the New Testament. This was the experience of those in the Old Testament as well. In fact, the first one to experience such taunting and contempt was not the psalmist here, and it was not someone like a King David or um, a Moses, but it goes back further than that. Uh, can you guess who was the first to receive contempt and scorn? And it may surprise you to, to think about it in this way. I think Joel Beakey was very helpful in pointing out in a book on dealing with criticism, that it was, in fact, God who was the first recipient of verbal abuse, of scorn and contempt. You think about this. You know, he created the world. He creates the beauty, which is the Garden of Eden. He places in the Garden of Eden Adam and Eve. Everything's going great until Satan comes and disrupts the peace that was there in the Garden. And he begins speaking words uh, to Adam and Eve. And while he is throwing contempt, if you will, their way, it's directed to God himself. Think about what he said. He says to Eve, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Well, God did not actually say that they could not eat of any tree in the garden. It was just the one tree that they were supposed to avoid. But what is Satan trying to do? He's trying to undermine God's generosity. He's, he's casting aspersions to God. You will not surely die, Satan said to her. And what's he doing there? He's attacking God's truthfulness. 